everyone, and I want to thank you to the, to the organization of this uh, conference to admit my, my proposition and also to the board of the, of the conference of here to admit this request. Well, I'm, I'm going to give you another point of view of, our, of a formation of an archaeological collection because um, I want to show you how um, the social network, that like he said, the, the companion, uh, the colleague, um, made possible to do things in this collection different to another one. And it was in the pioneer of the management and the organ of the archaeological collections in Spain. So um, let me introduce you uh, this, uh, this man. He's Jorge Bonso, who is called George Edward, Sa George Edward Bonso San Martin. I miss it here, there, sorry. So he is now well known in Spain as Jorge Bonso. Uh, he was a man who came to Spain as a tourist to like a former painter. So he, he came to do as these things, this kind of things. He, go, he, go, he, go, he came to the, to the country to discover our culture, to, to make some painters, some paintings about uh, our, fair, our Holy Week, our fair, things like this, and our landscapes. But in this, um, in this moment, at this moment when he arrives, he not also has the opportunity to discover Spain and our traditions. He also has the opportunity to make contact with, the, with the, a lot of people interested about the study of archaeology and history in Spain. Uh, he went, he made a travel, you will hear in the, in the app. Uh, he went, he went, uh, he gone, he made a travel through, through all Spain, and he decided to stay in the south. You see the, the, the red point, and um, over there, he make uh, he developed it, all his work because he had he had the opportunity to visit one Ipogean Ipogean Roman tomb in the necropolis de Carmona, and he saw the painting over there. And he said his writing. He said, "And now I I'm, I'm looking at these paintings. I decided to be an archaeologist. So, and this decision was crucial." Because in our in the story of archaeology in the south of Spain, because this what he is considered was one of the pioneer archaeologists here in this part of the country. His work it was one of the pioneer in different per perspective. This his first work works was in association with the with the local pharmacists and some people from the the, the town of Carmona, a little village who has. Uh, who were is nested at Roman and important Roman necropolis. So he, with this association with the pharmacy, the local pharmacy, Juan Fernando Lopez, he decided decided to excavate this site, and it was uh, this site was the first archaeological site presented to the public in Spain, and it was uh, and in, in inside it he has also the first archaeological museum site archaeological museum in Spain. You have here, so. And the tombs, as you see here, they were presented to the public. So it was uh, pioneering in this side, in this in this side. So, but he decided not only to study the necropolis because he was uh, really concerned about the study of the geography and the relationships of the culture and the ancient culture in Spain, um, in the south of Spain. So he decided to go to the to go and to explore the territory. He was a former painter. He was uh, here arrived to Spain with a, with a fine arts degree with an award in archaeology, but he was not a science, science scientist archaeologist as well as well. But uh, knowing this um, this uh, situation, I think I've been looking at all the all the works that he developed after the the excavation of the Roman necropolis. And it was always accompanied by someone. It is immense. It was he always collaborates with someone to do his kind of works, archaeological works. So he decided to uh, to explore the territory, as you say. And he collected a huge um, archaeological collection. And more of, most of them, these pieces were, were from protohistoric sites. So. 
He need now, just I saw, I, I said to you, uh, he made an excavation in the Roman necropolis. After that, he made a museum. Now he has excavated the territory and he needed a museum. So this is the origin of the collection that I want to, I want to expose to, and to expose to you. Here you have some faces well, that I prefer, I think, more or less. Um, and uh, we have the, the, the 1889 to 1902, the first phase, the origin of the collection, all the, the first excavation he made at the Region de los Alcores, near from Carmona, near to Carmona, close to Carmona. And then the second phase is in 1902 and 1907, when the rehabilitation and refurbishment of the Mairena de Alcor Castle, where will be installed this collection. And then, in the third phase, it was 1908, 1911, it was the second exploration of the Alcora region and the collaboration with the Hispanic Society of America. And after that, in 1912, 1930, the fourth phase, the collaboration in other projects, as by Lo Claudia Setefilla, I will show you. But the very beginning of, the collect, of this collection, this proto-historic collection that will be nested in the castle, it was the contact with Arthur Engel and Pierre Paris. They were, they were uh, invited by the minister of, uh, in France to look for the Iberian collection in Spain. So these relationships made him to feel attracted by the study of the proto-historic collection sites in this region. So, as I told you, he bought the castle in 1902 and he, he refurbished. As you see, it was a uh, house demolished and was in ruins, so he decided to to make a museum inside, trying to re to recover all the, the former uh, moors, walls that remains at this moment. So he made this kind of a museum like this, that it was also his private uh, dwelling. He made contacts after. He, the, one of the most important things is the, in the origin of the collection and the, the impact that I'm going to explain to you is the relationship that he had with a lot of um, scholars and researchers all over the world, we can say, Europe, and America, Africa. He has, we have um, in a difference, in difference with the other collection that we have been exposed before. We have uh, remains of every, of almost every document and every, every remains that he had in the, in the collection. So we have a huge letter archives that let us know who, with who he had contact in this moment, at this moment. And what was the, 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 well, the meaning, the, the things that we can relate to this. So, at the very first beginning, he made the, the, the exploration of the Alcores area with the proto-historic, all the proto many proto-historic uh, sites, and he made all these plans that we preserve at the moment. And he decided at this time he published all the results in the review, uh, archaeological review in Paris, and he decided at this moment to send this this article to many of the to many of the researchers and uh, archaeological researchers that they are working a lot around the Europe in this moment. So because of that, he made many, many, there were many interests about the, the, the researchers have many interests at both, sorry, has a lot of interest about the, the results that Bolsor has, has discovered in this region. So here it begins the context and the management of the collection. So, for example, he made contact with Archington Bullen, who was a botanist of the Malacological Society of London. So, looking at the results of this collection, of this research, he told him to, it was necessary to study the malacological remains that he found it over there. So, he decided to do it in collaboration with him, and now, in the museum, we have this collection of molecological items that are an even catalogued in this, in, 
this moment, it was the catalog at this moment, and now it, there are really important things to show to, to show to the new researchers because they are coming to the museum to look for them that the information that they have. So, and also another thing that I, I think is really important is that uh, they have the same presentation that Ashton Bullen sent to Bonser at the time, at the, at the, at the end of the uh, 19th century. All that contact was, if you have a collection, archaeological collection, you don't have only the pieces, you have always uh, to look for them in order to present them. So, metal items also uh, are um, usually different, it's difficult to, to, go, to preserve, to conserve. So, he made contact with Adrian Oger for the Narmur Archaeological Museum in Belgium, who was developing a formula who, who led the, the pieces to preserve the pieces, the metal pieces, the iron pieces. So, he, um, he used it, he asked him for it, he used it at the museum, and he recommended to another person who he knows, to other research, to do it. The formal, we don't know, because we bought this metal of what uh, was uh, applied in Estocolm, Bergen, Charleroi, Liege, and a lot, a lot of museums. We have no contact with, this, with them, maybe. We have to contact with them, because we, we have some of these pieces you see here. And there's a uh, piece uh, that they did apply, this method apply, and we have, we have them still now. So it uh, functions. But we don't know if inside there will be the piece, the piece of metal or not. So this is only a color. We have to consult to the other museum. But it's important at this time to have this notice about the preservation of the metal collection. Also, he has uh, a really, he was really interested, concerned about the study of the territory, as I, as I told you. So he decided to study the um, the river, the low valley of the Guadalquivir River, in order to look for the Roman factories. So he made uh, again a collaboration with the University of Cambridge, Cambridge and Cambridge Foundation, and worked with William Gilchrist Clark Maxwell. So, in, you know, the, the conclusion of this um, this study was published as well. And at the museum, we have a values um, remains. Like this, this uh, uh, crystal, crystal glass. Crystal, no, la vitrina. This remains. This is positions, positions uh, where we have all the handles with seals, even the seals, and in in, uh, in, the, in the other in the other one, we have all the conclusion that he had. So now, when the people come to the museum, even the child, it's really easy to explain them. What he, what he found and what was the result on an archaeological, scientific and archaeological study. So, this was another thing that we have over there glass case. What's that? What's that? And another collaboration, really important, was what uh, was that he, what he, he did with Pierre Paris in Bailo Claudia Cadiz at the south house of Spain. And over there, he he was fundamental to do all the plan on the plan of the necropolis of Roman again of Carmel of Bailo Claudia. So over there he, he made it, and the, um, in the result of, it, of this work, he also big try gifts to the to the collection and uh, some pieces like this that you can see. There are also some exchanges of pieces like this one from, sent to by Pedro Ibarra to him from the archaeological site of the, that we have found the Dama de Elche. And also another one, uh, another one from Numancia. He worked also with the Schulten in Doniana. And he has also some pieces, we have some pieces from there. It's also important to note that he has also concern about the, the protection or the preservation and other type of remains like the bone remains. So here we have this school, which is the oldest school trepan in the our region, and it's preserved over there. The, uh, the collaboration with the Spanish society was, was also very important because he 
added some pieces, some items to the museum in New York, and the Museum of New York published of many of his works also over there. So he also buys many items like this alabaster base or this, uh, this uh, statue of uh, Efebo, Roman Efebo, and it's also in the, in the collection. So the collection is really huge. Well, I have a lot of time, I have a lot of time. So this relationship with the Hispanic uh, society gives him, give him also the, um, the interest to, buy, to, to collect any other things like artisan, artisan pieces of work of art of, uh, of Spain and things like that. Like that. But the most important that I wanted to explain to you, but my English is not let me, uh, is the museography that he applied. New Italy and the Spain and the South, we have this kind of museography, sculptures, coins, and tab epigraphic te te tables, and now plates. And he has the contacts with another type of museography made in Egypt and Europe. So he visited many museums, and he take notes, and he made this kind of presentation that is really different of the other one. It was it was more positivist, positivist mean, uh, presentations of the time. So he made some notes about the presentation. He put made the presentation and he see he saw over there, and he also made some replicas to make understandable to the public the collections. And he made also to also consider about the context that you see. He made to discover some things and he made some glass cases and made a reconstruction of how it was. And he made also context, precious context about the dolmen that he excavated, like you can see here. And he made also well, he spread all this collection with the uh, tourist management of the castle. Mm -hmm. And also uh, the impact of the collection and the, the way to manage, manage it was uh, spread all, all over the world and there were a lot of people who came to visit Ponsor and to consult their collections as we have in the, in the firm, in the signature books that we present at the moment at the museum. So sorry about my English, <laughs> it's the first time. And I hope you understood. Thank you very much.